Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We're glad to see all of you, and we welcome you on this few days before Christmas. It's exciting to be together, and uh, we're, ex we're excited to worship. And so let's prepare our hearts to worship now. of our Advent candles. <clears throat> okay. 
Are we there yet? Trust. One thing we have learned on our Advent journey is that it is better not to go alone. We live in a do-it-yourself culture that celebrates the individual. But faith is not something that we can do on our own. We need companions on the journey. We need others to support us and strengthen us and encourage us. We put our journey in the hands of many people around us. And although it is a risk, we are better for it. We learn to trust that someone has our back as we make this journey of faith. Matthew reminds us that when God chose to come to earth the first time, God chose to trust in people to help make it happen. God trusted in Mary and God trusted in Joseph. In turn, we trust in God to be faithful to the promise and to sustain us through many others as we continue our journey of faith. We light the candles of peace, hope, joy, and trust as our circle is complete. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, that God may teach us the ways of peace, hope, joy, and trust.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Please stand as you are able for our responsive call to worship, hymn number 250 and the opening prayer. The prophet foretold it, the psalmist longed for it. Joseph dreamed of it, Paul proclaimed it. God has come to us to be with us, to restore us, to save us. Let us come and call and honor to worship God from against it all. We come this morning tired from rushing around, tired from trying to meet the demands and expectations of the season and other people. Slow us down. Help us center our thoughts. Restore us in a childlike wonder and a belief that dreams really do come true. We call on your name. Be with us and in us. Emmanuel. Amen. It is wonderful to see all of you once again and to welcome you to First United Methodist Church where we glorify God by connecting people to Jesus Christ through spiritual nourishment and dynamic outreach. And we are glad that you are here today. Our ushers are preparing to bring the attendance pads down and as they do that, as always, thank you for the information you provide us there. Just uh, fill it out, give it to the person next to you in your row and when it gets all the way to the end, pass it back so that you'll know everyone in your row and uh, we appreciate the information you provide us. While you're doing that, a couple of announcements from your bulletin that I'd like to lift up. One, tonight at 5 o'clock, 
uh, is our annual uh, caroling event, and we want to invite all of you to come and join us uh, at 5. Uh, bring a, a soup or some sandwiches, and let's potluck it together, and we'll eat. And then around 5.30 or so, we'll head out and then come back to the church for some uh, some of Tanya's world-famous hot chocolate and some uh, cider. We look forward to that. But it's going to be a great time as we visit with some very, uh, very important people in the life of our church uh, who are anxiously awaiting for us to come and share the Christmas season with them. And we look forward to that every year, and I hope you'll be with us tonight. Uh, on uh, Tuesday night, Christmas Eve, we want to remind you we have three services uh, the first one at 4 o'clock in Asbury Hall, a very family-friendly service, uh, kind of casual, and we want to invite you to come to that. We have another service, a traditional service, here in the sanctuary at 7, and then another one at 11. So give you some choices there to work that out with your families. But please come and join us uh, for a very special evening. I'm sorry, but this year I cannot guarantee you any snow, uh, especially for those of you at the midnight service. Uh, one of the things I love about midnight is singing Silent Night and the back door, and those door, front doors open up and the snow is... Well, anyway, that ain't going to happen this year. So, anyway. Uh, and then lastly, uh, next Sunday, everybody say next Sunday, <laughs> is our SOS Sunday worship. We'll have one service at 1030 and we look forward to joining, uh, for you joining us together for that. What a great service is planned uh, as we celebrate... Uh, uh, the, the first, thir well, the last uh, Sunday of the year. And it'll be a great Sunday. And brunch, oh yes, thank you. And brunch, we'll be, uh, bring some potluck. We'll brunch it at 9.30 with the service at 10.30. So that'll be a great time. We'll be up in Asbury Hall. So come, you've got great music planned. You're going to love it. And so we'll be there for, for that. Now, friends, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Can we? Mighty and loving God, what a great honor it is to gather in this place on this fourth Sunday of Advent. The waiting is almost over. And we thank you, Holy God, that you have walked with us in this past year, really, and every step that we've taken with every breath that we have breathed in, you have been there. And what an honor it is to be able to share and worship today and celebrate the abundant love of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's that wonderful gift that you have provided for us that we acknowledge this day. And we give thanks, knowing that we're not worthy, we didn't earn this, and yet your love overflows on this special day. We thank you, God, that we can pray to you and you are eager to hear our prayers. And you called us to share with our concerns and needs. And we think about the sick and the hurting. Some are in the hospital. Some have been had a long year of, of recovery, of treatment for disease, of rehabilitation. There have been all kinds of needs, God, and you have walked with us every step of that way again. Thank you for the healing that we find in Jesus Christ. And thank you for gifting so many with the, the gift of healing. And Lord, today as we pray, we certainly remember so many who grieve. And in this season, grief seems to strike so much harder. But you are still our comforter. You're the one that consoles us when we need this most. And so we give you thanks. Lord, thank you for our church. Thank you for its many ministries and the mission locally and around the globe. And all the opportunities that you give us to be faithful servants one to another. And so bless, may your blessing of the Holy Spirit dwell in this worship time. Bless those that are present in their families and their homes. Bless the leaders of our community, of our commonwealth, of our nation and our world. And be with those, O oh God, especially on this Christmas season, who 
who are far from their families, but they protect the freedom that we enjoy. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing and the gift of your Son, Jesus. And may you now be with us as we unite our hearts and our voices and we share together the prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Let me invite our children to come forward now. You can sit right here. Come right on. Get as close as you can. I want to see. I want you to be able to see me. What do you got, man? Um, Everybody sit down. It's very okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Everybody sit down. You can sit down. Just right there on the floor. It's great. Thank you. I uh, I uh, have a friend with me today that I wanted to show you. Do you all know who that is? Baby Jesus. How do you know that? Because he's in a manger. Because he's in a manger. Okay. His last name is Baby. His main, last name is Baby. That's right. Yeah. Um, oh, be, because um, the nativity scene is here? Yeah, well, because the nativity is here. Do you know what day this is? Um, December. Yeah, it's almost. It's almost Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. And, you know, we get so excited. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah. And we get excited for a lot of reasons. We get excited because we're going to get presents, maybe. We're going to see our family, friends, and so forth. And I want to say today that I'd like for us to just think about baby Jesus. I don't know if you've ever gotten to see this very close up, but I want you to see it very closely. Because I want you to think about baby Jesus on Christmas Day, okay? Because this is the reason that we're really here. We're here to celebrate Christ's birth. And Christ came to be among us and love us just as we are. And that's a special gift for us. And so as we give our presents to one another and we get presents and we have uh, maybe time with our families and friends, take time, stop, just take time and think about this special gift of Jesus for you and for me. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for your love, for your blessing, and for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for us. Thank you for these beautiful children, for their families. Bless them, and may you always be with us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. The friends, our ushers are preparing to come forward, so let's prepare ourselves now to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we do thank you for the, your blessing of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ. And today, as we offer our gifts and our tithes, May we be generous as well, as you have been so generous to, for us. Bless now the gifts and the givers. In Christ we pray. Amen.
Be seated. And now, the festival of lessons and carols. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Today's word is delivered to us through the written scriptures and through the lyrics of the anthems and carols which we will sing. It is our hope that you will experience the Christmas message in its truest form today. <coughs> a reading from Genesis 22, verses 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and, not, and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gates of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. 
His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the, sheep, with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and that her, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for your God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill may be lowered. And the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough, pl- and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of, God, of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For a m- mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice, cry, a voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. They are Constance is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. When the, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of, the, of God will stand forever. the God of Israel, who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Savior from the house of David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He shows mercy to our forebears and to remember the holy covenant. This is the oath God swore to our father Abraham. shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. You give our people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your room and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thank you. 
that all the world should be registered. And this was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to a city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Christmas and the coming of Christ reveals, friends, a radically new path of life that God invites us to follow a way of divine love, a way of mercy and forgiveness, a way of humility and, forg and service, the way of meaning and purpose, the way of abundance leading to eternal life, all of which is part of what we have experienced in our readings for today. The way of Jesus is not an easy path, my friends. It's a way that begins in a humble manger in the poor village of Bethlehem. It continues in, a, in the life of sacrifice and service to others, and ultimately ends on the cross. And yet, if we choose to walk his narrow and difficult path, 
We are choosing to live with the Christmas spirit throughout the year. We will live a life of wonder and joy because we are transformed by the truth that God is with us. My family, as we prepare to go, may I offer this word of encouragement in light of our scripture for today and in, mit in the midst of a troubled world. No matter what is said on the news, or no matter what happens in our country or in the world around us, don't be anxious and do not be afraid. The Feast of Christmas proclaims to us loudly and boldly that God has already acted decisively in this world. And if we choose to live under God's authority and in God's kingdom, then we can be assured that God is with us and will help us remain victorious over any and every evil that the world might offer. My friends, Christ is born. Oh, come let us adore him. And may each of you have a blessed Christmas. Let's stand and let's sing our closing hymn, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, Number 229. God, you have given us your greatest gift, your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, we thank you for that blessed gift and your enabling us to go into the world to share this great news. May your peace that passes all understanding abide with us forever and ever. Amen. God bless all of you and greet one another before you go.